Okay, Becky. This is the other story you asked for. Stumps, Love, and the Old Stone Lighthouse. An authentic Wisconsin legend about the Old Stone Lighthouse on Lake Superior. Well, I was a young 20 in those days when undetected and unintentionally I happened to hear an old woman telling about Grandpa and the Old Stone Lighthouse. The funny thing was, she just talked on and on in that warm, scratchy voice, no one asking questions, laughing, coughing, nothing. Just her in the wind. I was hitchhiking and had been walking across Lake Superior, which connects the state of Wisconsin to the state of Minnesota. I was tired, rain was coming, and I was looking for a place to rest when I saw this blue historical monument sign that read next right. Your, your grandpa and me lived in that old school lighthouse over 35 years. I heard her saying as she told her little story. It was our first home. We loved it so much, the storms would come, the whole sky would come to black at night, and the wind would fill the air all around and coat all the windows, so as you could barely see out, your grandpa would say, Mama, a storm she's a-coming in on. Put your coffee on. It's a lot of work in those days. It took all of both of us. We worked so hard together, putting on that old acetylene light. There weren't no radio or telephone in those days, no electricity, no gasoline motors. Grandpa and me lived all alone on that island so many years, and, 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 and we had a garden and chickens, and Grandpa would say, Mama, storm sheets are coming in on Put your coffee on. So I'd go out to the wood, chair, and I'd fetch in a good stock of wood for the stoves, and I'd make up a yeast bread starter, and set it out to bubble while Grandpa and me went up to fire up the light. He always used to say how kerosene would have been so much better than finicky old carbide water, even if it wasn't so bright, because uh, at least it would always burn, but, but, but we always seemed to be able to make do with whatever we had. I, I, I used to curse that old light, so Daddy'd have to go up, out on the roof, no matter how bad the storm, how cold and wet, and check the burning to see if the carbide was making in too much gas or not enough. Daddy was always checking on that light when the storms would come. He he just stay wet most of the time. I always knew his grandpa would go from pneumonia. But I know we wouldn't have wanted it much other way. The state would always tell Daddy no every time he complained about that old acetylene light and asked for kerosene. No, no, they'd say. But that was in the early days. And after a while, we sort of came to love that old outdated lamp and Grandpa stopped complaining. My part, see, was to fire up that cute little steam engine. It had the biggest flywheel you ever seen next to so small an engine. It was bright green paint, and I always kept it clean and shiny. Whenever any paint chip off, I'd go and touch it up right away. Poor Grandpa used to get so mad we were always forgetting to oil the rope seals. 
Me and Purdy don't make an engine run, Martha would say. You gotta start oiling those rope seals so the steam pressure don't come out. And, sure enough, I'd, I'd be dripping in with sweat, a splitting wood, and getting in that boiler pressure built to starting in. And I'd pull on the gate valve and give the flywheel a heat, and the steam would come a hissing out from those shaft seals a mile a minute. Then I'd have to get Daddy started. See, the steam engine makes the big mirror go round the lamp and sends out the big low roaring to warn the boats about the island and the rocks so they wouldn't hit them. That's why the state put your grandpa and me up in that old stone lighthouse to tend the lamp and, and warn all the boats. It was my job to keep the mirror all polished to shining. We'd just be sitting in the park. Grandpa was looking out the window, looking over the water, and dreaming such big dreams for both of us. But that's only the little boy in him, the grandpa I loved most of all. He was such a dedicated man, and he always took such good care of me and the lamp and the boats. Always making sure I was warm and had nicest things that he could afford. And, and always making sure the boats would have the lamp and the horn in time. It weren't considered much of a job in those days. To be sent out to live on a small island, no by yourself never getting to go shop or go to weddings, getting everything out from the Montgomery Ward's catalog, and all the people used to say it was just a lazy man's job tending the lamp, just sitting around all the time waiting on storms or fog. But there we'd be, working the garden, Working the hen house, the hogs, cutting in and splitting wood. The hand in those days, there, there was so much wood to get. Your grandpa just couldn't keep up, so we had to do it together. He cut and haul and I'd split. Daddy and me worked good together. He, he was a good man. Sometimes we'd just be sitting in the parlor, Grandpa dreaming his eyes over the water and me and knitting socks or looking in the catalog at the pretty dresses and he would say, Mama, a storm she's a coming on. Put the coffee on. Then we'd start our lamp work, him firing the lamp. Your grandma firing that cute little steam motor, always forgetting the oil and rope seals. Sometimes it takes as long as four hard, steady hours before we could sit down and rest the coffee and I could start the bread arising. I always baked our bread during the storms. Daddy used to say, I'll take the best bread of anyone. He always wanted me to bake in the storms because he said, he said my coffee and fresh out of the oven hot bread was like being in heaven to a cold wet man. Grandpa was always wet during the storms. You know, he, he worried me so going out to cut wood and even the wettest and windiest of storms just to keep up the lamp. He was such a good man. I miss him so. It, 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 it just ain't the same. Him and me working that lamp together. Him coming into bed with his wet clothes. Me fixing up his coffee and bread all hours of the night. 
trying to keep him from coming into pneumonia. We never used no clock, that ain't me. The storms and the fogs were our clocks. I wish I wasn't barren. Your grandpa always wished for a son to help him with the work. But when electronics and cars came, soon afterwards the state said there was no need for us in the lamp anymore. They said we could stay on at the old house, but we just couldn't make it not having any income. There wasn't no pension or nothing. Grandpa just kind of lost heart, having no purpose. We couldn't have no kids. And so, the lamp, that's where it came in, into being our child. Your grandpa just wasn't the same after we had to leave that island. I wish you could have been around for this bridge they built. We'd have come here to visit the old house and the lamp all the time. Now that they got the place all boarded up, I bet it's Roman without Daddy and me taking care of it. See? You can just now make out how the window wood is peeling and starting to rot in places. I guess it's starting to catch up to us getting, getting old. You know, when they first built this bridge, it was said to be one of the longest in the world. Now they got television and airplanes and telephones and... Why, this bridge ain't even considered special. Grandma paused. You see, the bridge grew out of the water on old rusted steel posts and meandered across the big lake connecting the state of Wisconsin to the state of Minnesota, joining up two big cities and stopping at three different islands along the way. Two of the islands were full of green grass and beautiful trees, and they had public restrooms there and places to picnic. But this one, the other island, just had the old stone two-story lighthouse on it and too many rotten tree stumps, the people said. They said it was kind of quaint around the old house, though, in the summertime because somehow every year these roses, tulips, and the yellow daffodils would grow into flowers from inside the various flower boxes beneath the windows all around the old lighthouse. There was a new kind of group of people called environmentalists, and, and they said what the place really was was a monument of environmental shame to the state of Wisconsin. And then Toil read, Here the state of Wisconsin puts up a sign saying historical monument. Next right, the article went on. The Gabe Johnson Lighthouse. So what the monument really is is an example of how the state of Wisconsin recklessly raked over 60% of all the trees on such a beautiful, potentially, park site. The problem so far was that the state of Wisconsin and the state of Minnesota, they couldn't decide whose responsibility the rejuvenation should be. Well, anyway, yes, I was walking across that bridge when I was younger, saw that sign. The sun was almost gone, rose rising. The wind was picking up. The air had that smell that rain was coming. And a force of pitch black thick clouds were rolling towards me quickly from the north so I could see a storm was coming. Not just rain, 
and I thought I might be able to find an old shed to camp in and stay dry during the storm, so it turned right, just as the sign said, and at the bottom of the off-ramp curved around towards the old stone house it did and became gravel, and next to the aging, boarded-up old lighthouse, an old antique blue Studebaker sedan was parked. It had just arrived, and an old woman, wearing what I recognized to be Kelly Hansen's, uh, you know, that's the famous brand of rain suit, and she was just walking around the corner, the far corner of the house, the lighthouse, which faced across the wires to the north. She was talking to someone, but I, I hadn't arrived soon enough to, to see who it was. Her voice was tender and shaky, and she was telling someone this story, so I just sat down on the ground, leaning against the stone side of the house around the corner from her, and I listened. She just told her story on and on and on. The other person never making a sound. After a while, I started feeling guilty eavesdropping. I got up to make my presence known, but when I looked around the corner, there wasn't anyone else there. Just her. Sitting on the bench next to her were a small bunch of flowers and a pair of scissors and some string, that's all. I, I waited around unnoticed, listening to her talk, waiting for someone to appear, but I soon realized she was talking to the flowers. Soon the wind was strong enough that it started pushing the flowers off the bench. A shivery wet mist had begun to blow off from the lake, the old woman gathered the fresh picked flowers and carefully trimmed the stalks with her scissors. She arranged them into a bouquet, tying it together with the string. She snipped the knot close, stood up, opened her storm jacket, and carefully slipped the bouquet of flowers and her hand inside. The wind tried to blow open her unsnapped jacket, so she pressed her other arm up against the coat and walked off through some bushes, down the hill towards the shore. I decided to follow. Near one very large trunked oak tree, I saw a grave, and she put the flowers very particularly on the ground, up close next to the small stone marker. She rose up, looked off into the north at the clouds. By now, her rain suit flopping in the wind and the mist dripping off her hat, she turned her eyes back to the flowers and smiled. A storm, she's a coming in, Daddy, she said. Guess I better put on the coffee. She walked back up through the bushes, and the sky opened up with a bright flash of lightning and a sharp crack of It was like there was a lake inside those clouds, which got too heavy and fell to the ground. We met. Too bad that the place is all boarded up, I said as I gave her a wet hand and Helped her up the hill. Oh, my, young man, she said. No one ever comes around here. Why, you'll catch your death pneumonia out here in the storm, she said. Then she smiled at me and reached in her pocket. Between the thunder, the pounding rain, and the wind, I could barely hear her. I have the key, she said. See? Now follow me, young man. You need to get your clothes dry and something like my hot coffee in you. Well, 
after we were inside. And she had lit the fire in the cook stove and the kerosene lamp. I told her I was sorry, but I had never liked coffee and hoped it would not offend her. By then, I was choked through and started to chill, so I huddled up close to the cook stove, waiting for the heat. Don't you worry, young man, she said. You'll like my coffee. And I did. For the first time. When it was finally ready, I was so shivering chilly and wet, it was just what I needed. That's when I started to be a coffee drinker, and now, whenever I'm cold and drink coffee, I, I always think of Grandpa. Mama, a storm, she's a-coming in. Put your coffee on. I guess I have a special memory for Grandma and Grandpa and the old stone lighthouse out there. And especially all those rotten tree stumps. Because now, whenever I see a group of tree stumps, I see more than ugly results of progress. I see more than Grandpa chopping down the tree to make sure the boats have the lamp, to save their skippers from the rocks. I see more than Grandma squinting through a splashing storm-battered window with a worried look on her face, searching through the windy sheets of rain for a misty glimpse of the man for whom the coffee was meant, the hot, fresh bread, and the warm, dry clothes hanging near the stovepipe. I see more than I ever imagined I could see in an ugly, old, rotten tree stump. I see a monument, a legacy of love, something it seems to be getting as rare as trees in these modern days of electronics and telephones.